Hello Geographies, welcome to another tutorial video. My name is Tafelo Tsuyo. In this video, we're looking at map interpretation. And before we could start, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And also click the notification button so that you don't miss out on any update. I will be focusing on how to read your map in the exam and tips on how to get free marks when you are writing. So, getting into it. Every map has these basic map symbols which you need to be familiar with when you are writing, but not necessarily to cram them. You will find them at the bottom of the map, on either side or on either side of your map um, of 1 is to 50,000 topographic maps. So the first concept that you need to understand is that of contour intervals. Um, it is the vertical distance or rather contour intervals is the vertical distance or difference um, in elevation between two contour lines. It differs between 1 is to 50,000 map, which is a topographic map, and your one is to ten thousand auto photo maps so these are maps that you uh, you use mostly for your exams so for your topographic map your contour interval will be 20 meters whereas your for your auto photo map your contour interval will be five five meters so in this slide, rather, are these examples to show you the difference. Um, on your left, which is your topographic map, so we will start at the bottom of uh, this map over here. As you can see, you have that contour line there, which is uh, 1,240, and we also have this contour line over here so what how, how we get or how we calculate the contour interval um we get the contour interval by subtracting the two close uh contour lines so this is measured in meters and as you can see if you say 12 60 minus 1240 the difference or the answer is 20 meters which gives us the 20 meter contour interval for the topographic map and for your auto photo map when we start uh, at this contour line over here which is the 6, 1660 uh, going to 1680 we note or we Pay attention to these contour lines as we move towards the 1680 and you can see that you have to add five meters on each contour lines to get to 1680 so this will be 1660 1665 1670 uh, 1675 and then 1680 meters So another concept that you need to understand when you are in your exam is that of altitude, which is the height above sea level. We need to understand this because it can be used to um, in an exam by the examiner to calculate your gradient or distance between the two points or or any of the calculations so we may ask you to find 
any of those whether your gradient whether your 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 distance from any of this point so altitude is high above sea level and we express this in four different forms so the first one is the trigonometric station or trigonometric bacon um, it is represented by a small triangle and please note that the number above the number above the triangle is is the number is the station number and below is your your altitude which is in meters so the number above or this number here this 229 will be the station the trick station and then uh 12000 uh, rather, one thousand two hundred and twenty-six point six meters will be, uh, would be, in meters, which is your your altitude, and the second point, uh, is the spot height, which is also measured in difference, and we identify this by just those dots over here. So this one would be twelve oh eight meters and then this one will be 12 15 meters now these remember they represent what your height above above sea level we also use benchmarks so normally your benchmarks you'll find them on the road and they are also measured in meters as well and they'll be represented by these arrows over here which points to your altitude so taking for instance this over here 1238 and this 1237 remember they are in meters so if we were to find the contour line over here we know that the difference between 1248 and 1238 so this contour line over here will be top 40. So remember the contour lines are always uh, in 20. Like they'll be from 20 and then you add the distance to your next benchmark, which will be, which will be um, top 48. So we also use contour lines, which I explained in this in this slide over here that um, your contour that contour lines are lines on the map joining joining a points which are the same height so you also need to understand um, the concept of topography which is literally relief or shape of the of the land this can be either slip uh, this can either be a steep slope or a gentle slope so the examiner may ask you to tell if the slope is gentle slope or steep slope and ask you to provide evidence for your answer so for st your steepness as seen on this um on this slide um number one the closer the contour lines are to each other the steeper the slope so as you can see over here you can see that the contour lines are fairly closer to each other which indicates that you have a steep slope and also in this um, examples example over here and um, if you have uh, or rather another point is that you will have multiple streams which flow in different direction especially um, in your hills so 
this also indicates that the steepness here or rather the the relief or the shape of land here is a steep slope because of these uh, number of streams that we have over over here and lastly at the steep slopes you normally have minimum to no vegetation or cultivated land because it is difficult for farmers to um, to farm uh, on steep slopes so these are three these are the three um, evidence that shows us that this is a um, this is a a steep slope on your on your maps so for your gentle slopes um, number one your contour lines will always be far from each other as you can see uh, in this map over here we have your contour lines over there and then another one over there which is flowing uh, in that direction over there and this is there's another one over here so this shows that um, you have a gentle a gentle slope uh, in this uh, in this map over here also in this in this uh, map on your left hand side you will see that the contour lines are not uh, that close to each other and this indicates that um, this is a, a gentle slope and then number two you will see river meanders which uh, which shows that um, you are now at the bottom of the of the slope so here's another example here's an example here uh, look at this meander of the river over here so this shows when you see this or when you see um, a cap in your uh, in your stream or in your, uh, your river you will tell that you will know that you are now at the gentle slope um, of your of your land so the reason for this uh, meandering of the river is that now the, the speed of water has decreased. Remember, you are now at the gentle slope. So the river is trying to find its way as it, uh, as it tries to find um, um, its mouth to the ocean or its entrance to, to the ocean. And then number three, um, is your cultivated land so in the fed or in a gentle slope farmers are able to farm um, and then you will see evidence of cultivated land and also vegetation to show now that the ground is able to hold um, um, your vegetation or your plants so, uh, so that's why you will see you'll normally see um, your vegetation and your cultivated land and you would say you have a gentle slope so that's another evidence and lastly at the gentle slope that's where you get most of your marshes and clay so as you can see um, on your left hand side or on the map on your left um, look at these marshes and flay over here so we can say that as you can see the contour lines are far away from each other and we can tell that this is a, a gentle slope so these are four evidences that you can give in an exam when you are asked to tell if the, uh, the slope is a gentle or or a steep slope so moving on the examiner may ask you to determine which direction the river is flowing in your exam in your exam and you need to understand and be able um, to do this so we use few, few criteria to find the direction of the river so number one is the use of um, 
um, of the height of contour uh, of contours as the river uh, flows down the hill. So remember that rivers always flow from the top of the hill, which is where the, the source is, down, down, and then down the hill to to the river river mouth. And I'm gonna try to zoom in over here uh, to show you samples. So if you can look at um, the trick station 287 and the benchmark 1060, uh, 1067 over there, you can see that uh, there's a difference in height as the, the height of this trigonomic station over here is 1299.5, which is, and then the benchmark has the 1067 uh, meters. So from the benchmark to the trick station over here, you can tell that you have an upslope. So we can literally say that this river is flowing from this trick station in the direction of the benchmark so it is going down the hill from this trick station to uh, the benchmark over here so the ge general direction will be southwards of this stream over here similarly to this one over here uh, as we know now that this is a a, a steep slope from this trick economic station to the road right over here. So we can say that this river is flowing towards the southward direction and also this stream over here. So this is how we can use contour lines um, to find the stream direction. So number two, let me try to zoom out. So number two is the bending of contour lines uh, uphill. So how do we use this to find um, to find your directional flow? I'm gonna try and zoom again. So I'm gonna start here or try to use these examples that I already used already. Um, as you can see, as we have said that you have the trigonomic station which is uphill and then the road is downhill or is down uh, at the bottom of the hill. Your contour lines would be bent upwards towards the uphill. So when you see, uh, when you see your contour lines being bent, um, towards the uphill, you know that the stream is flowing uh, in the opposite direction. So in this instance, let's look at this river over here, uh, this channel over here. You can see that the contour lines are, are, are pointed upwards or are pointed northwards. And we can say this stream is flowing southwards at the opposite side of the, of the stream. So we can also try to use, or we can also indicate in this uh, this example over here, we have your canal over here and this stream over here. If you can look at the contour lines, they are pointing up the hill because uh, at this trigonomic station, this is the highest point and this is the lowest point because we know, we know that because of this contour line over here. So the difference between 1040 and 1100 over there, we can see that this slope is going, um, or rather this is a, a steep slope from there over there, meaning this is your downhill. So these contour lines are pointing upwards towards your left, and this stream as a result is flowing uh, towards your right, which is, um, which is the east, eastwards. So 
Remember, I said the bending of your contour lines pointing up here um, is also another example or another criteria which you can use to show the directional flows. And this is true because if we can come up here on this map, uh, we can see that this is your highest point and this is your lowest point uh, looking at this um, spot height over here and looking at that spot height over here this congestion of or this closeness of um, contour lines tells us that these um, this is a steep slope so with your contour lines bending towards um, towards the uphill you can tell that this stream is flowing downhill which is towards your left towards your left because the these these contour lines over here are pointing upwards or towards uphill so i may i hope that makes sense and it doesn't confuse you so that's another point and lastly um we also use dam walls uh, which are located where rivers flow out of the stream so let's try and zoom again on this map and try to explain so as seen here this this is your dam wall and is located where water is enclosed over here thus your directional flow will be towards um, your left side or your west wards this is proven by what this is proven by this non perennial water meaning as this uh, as this dam wall is closed um, water water is enclosed and cannot escape um, towards towards your river direction so remember your dam walls are always placed uh, at the point to avoid or to to stop the water the flow of water and normally um, they will use gates different gates or number of gates to regulate water flow so due to this non perennial water we can tell that um, at, at some point, uh, these gates are totally closed um, to preserve the water, uh, the water in this in this dam. Where, whereas uh, in this map over here, let me try to zoom. In this map over here, on your right hand side. Um, you can see that this is your dam wall over here which is located uh, at the north part of uh, of the dam so meaning this this um, this dam flows towards north direction why because we know that your dam wall is always located where where there's an outflow of your waters and as a result um, your your directional flow is towards the dam wall so this is northwards or not uh, this is located at the north part of the dam so your directional flow will be towards towards the north direction so we can end this by saying that when the dam wall is placed at the north uh, your directional flow will also be towards towards north uh, to, towards north rather because if water was coming from north towards uh, the demo it will overflow uh, in this stream it will overflow uh, to uh, outside the banks so when that uh, uh, when your demo is closed so meaning we can literally say that water comes out of the dam into the rivers so your directional flow will be 
will be towards towards north. So moving forward, um, let me zoom out. Moving forward, we also talk about the concept of um, the concept of rainfall in an area. So your examiner may ask you to determine if um, the area receives seasonal or annual rainfall. So when you talk about seasonal rainfall, you know that uh, this area or rather the certain area might be receiving only rain in certain seasons. So for instance, if we use uh, examples in South Africa, uh, Cape Town experiences mediterranean uh, climate whereby they receive uh, their uh, their rain in winter. So that's a seasonal seasonal rainfall. So evidence of uh, how you would find give evidence from the map to show that an area receives um, an annual or a seasonal rainfall. So as you can see he, uh, this map over here, we can say that this area receives its annual uh, rainfall. And number one, we look at perennial rivers. So you can see that this area is full of um, rivers which are permanent rivers, or we can say they are per perennial rivers so perennial we mean that these streams are permanent meaning they flow throughout the year and also you can see we have a quite number of dams in this area and these dams as you can see they are not um they are not non -peren perennial water sources but they are perennial sources meaning they contain water throughout the year so this is one evidence that we can say that this map, or rather this area, receives um, receives its annual rainfall. And number two, we talk about cultivated land, or rather we look at the amount of vegetation. As you can see over here, as you can see in this area, like the area is... Uh, or rather consist of largely amount of cultivated land and remember to maintain this cultivated land you need amounts of waters uh, to to irrigate this area look at the amount of vegetation this green area is your vegetation so we can fairly say that this area receives enough water or enough rainfall throughout the year and number three, we also talk about um, wetlands. So normally you'll find your marshes and flays uh, in an area or in your map to as, a, as evidence to show that this area receives quite enough of amount of water. So an example is that over, over there. Look at those marshes and flay over there on top of everything that we have talked about. So those are the three or four uh, evidences that you can give in an exam if you are asked if the area receives uh, a seasonal or an annual rainfall. And we also talk about the types of rivers. So remember we have uh, four types of rivers and these are permanent exotic periodic and episodic so these rivers determine the amount of rain that we receive with permanent being the rivers that flows throughout the year whereas periodic um, are those that really um, flow throughout um, when when uh, seasonally they, they they only flow uh, during uh, winter, uh, not winter season, but rather during um, during rainfall. So there are rivers which only flow when it rains, when it rains, and when the rain um, 
uh, is done or when there's no longer rain it doesn't flow in at all so please note those evidences that we have just talked about when determining the amount of rainfall um, and then lastly we talk about um, measure primary activities the examiner may ask you to give the general or the major activity in an area so i'm trying i'm gonna try to zoom in and on this map to explain or for you to be able to determine and see how you can differentiate um between um between your activities so you can be asked if the area is dominated by primary secondary or tertiary activities so just to refresh your mind primary activities are those that are uh, uh, you can or they can include farming which is which can be commercial or subsistence and primary activities can be mining also and uh, and fishing and etc and then secondary activities can include um, manufacturing which is done in your factories and industries and then when you talk about tertiary activities we're talking about um, uh, services giving services to people so these can be schools hospitals um, hairdressers and and, and etc so let's try to zoom in here to tell uh, if this map or this area is a primary is dominated by primary or secondary um, activity so as you can see in this map <clears throat> you have lots of diggings you have diggings over there you have diggings over here you also have diggings over here and over there and as you move upwards the map you can see that you find your dams over there or your mine dams over there mine dams over there one two three of mine dams and diggings over here so we can literally say that because of these diggings that we see over here this amount of diggings we can conclude that this area is dominated by primary activity and that primary activity is what is mining is your your mining and to prove that as i say as i said you have many mine dams which shows that this area is dominated by by mining and remember for your mining as you mine your product your produce you will need to transport them immediately so we have two two types of transportation so this means that whatever that is mined can be transported where they would using trucks or using the rail uh, <clears throat> trains as you can see here's your, your, your railway station so remember this is this represents you uh, your railway station so you can use your trains to uh, to transport whatever that is being mined in this area so we can say this area is dominated by mining because of these two types of uh, form of transport others may say this area is dominated by farming because of this amount of cultivated land and you can also say that whatever that is being produced or planted over here or harvested can be transported using these roads so this area is dominated by two uh, primary activities which is your mining activity and farming but as you can see uh, these too many diggings tells us that the major and dominant uh, primary activity is mining so those are the factors that you can tell um, that an area is dominated by uh, primary activities or secondary activities and or 
tertiary activities so i hope <clears throat> you guys can use these tips that i have given here in your map interpretation and application in an exam and final tip is that when you are writing your exam and you are on your map section please take your time don't rush open your eyes be observant and also pay attention to what the question is asking because i can tell you the answers are in front of you the answers are in your map you just need to open your eyes and read what you see give answers of what you see on your on your map when you are on your map interpretation and application so with that said i will end here please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel until next time